Welcome to another Node-RED tutorial series. I mean, it's not really a tutorial because uh, I don't want to talk about a specific subject, but I was working on something and I think it would, could be quite useful, so I wanted to share with you. It's all about scheduling a particular task in Node-RED for which I usually use the inject node and I would set up the inject node so, you know, it in uh, executes at a certain interval. So let's say, you know, every second or every minute or, you know, every five seconds, whatever. And I was thinking that I wanted to have a process where I wanted to control this interval. So I don't want to set it fixed in the inject node. And I was thinking about a couple of ways of doing it. And I, I came up with this one where you start the process. And so now I specified uh, the update to be executed every once every every second. So you can see that I'm getting a trigger. So yeah, it's all good. So this is the debug node, which is uh, basically the output of this flow. And it's working fine. And I can change the rate to every two seconds. So now I'm only getting an update or a trigger every second, every two seconds. But if I want to change to five seconds, I can do that as well. And now I have to wait for five seconds for the next one to arrive. So it's 32 and the next one should be 37 if everything works fine. Yeah, 37. So that's it. It's not complicated, but um, maybe this is something that you also need in a project. So um, I was thinking that, you know, I want to process uh, data, I want to store it in a database, but I'm not really sure what is the interval. So instead of hard coding into the flow, maybe I just want to go into the UI or have any other way to set this and I should be able to do that. And with this, uh, you know, small piece of flow, I can do that. So let me show you how it works. So the, um, the whole thing, about well the you know the the main node which makes all this uh, uh, thing go is uh, is a simple delay node, and uh, in the basic setting you have uh, you have this option to delay each message and then you can specify the you know, the delay let's say five seconds, but then uh, you usually pick this fixed delay that's the uh, that's the default setting. But you also have this option here to override the delay with the delay message dot delay, and um, it's it could be a little bit misleading because that this means that for e if you specify the message dot delay for the message and with every message, then that basically that overrides the five seconds. And if you don't specify the message dot delay, then it's going to use this five seconds which is specified here. So uh, it's not like you set it and then it applies for every new message. So the idea is that I'm going to have a message dot delay, which actually I store in the, I think I yeah I store in the flow context. I call it the rate limit, but yeah it's a message dot delay. So then every time the message comes in, I add the message dot delay. So that's whatever I specified it here: one second, two seconds, or five seconds. And then uh, so that goes into the delay, and then. It gets delayed by five seconds. It goes to the output, but then it all also goes back. So it creates like a like a recursive uh, uh, delay or like a feedback loop. And then so the message goes out, and then it comes back again, uh, and then it, it waits again, and it goes back in it. Yeah, it's it's that's the that's the main concept. And probably here I would also like to highlight that it's. Uh, because of this whole thing, it's not going to be exactly precisely one second or two seconds or five seconds because we are delaying that whole process here and then it has to go back and come back again. So could, that could be a couple of milliseconds or a microseconds delay. So, but if you need like, like really exact on the nanosecond timing, you probably have to use something else. But the kind of things I'm using is for, you know, storing it in database, I think that should be sufficient. The idea is that you start with an inject node. Well, in my case for the demonstration, I'm using the inject node, but of course it can be anything. It can be like a drop down on a UI, or it can be a slider. The, the important thing is that you send the millisecond delay in the message.payload. So it will be 1000 for one second, then it will be 5000 for five seconds. And, and I'm going to store this uh, in a flow variable, I call this uh, rate limit. And uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I also created a couple of, uh, well, set a topic and a payload. 
and then this message goes into this message uh, well sorry this uh, the the message goes through here and it goes to the message delay and then it just you know picks up the same value that we just set on the on the flow variable so flow dot rate limit and then it puts it to the delay variable uh, sorry it puts it into the message dot delay so then the the message continues into the delay node with the the delay value that we specified and then of course it gets delayed and then the you know once it is delayed then it goes out to the you know whatever flow that we want to control and then it also co uh, goes back or feeds back so then it you know creates the next message and the next message after that so simple as that so the reason i've added these two things here because um, um, what happens is that you know like one message feeds back and then you know there is there is one message which is basically going through this uh, this infinite loop that i created here and of course uh, a copy of the message always goes out to create the trigger itself so when i send a new message in that now we are changing to two seconds or five seconds then i might have like two messages in the loop so this is why i have to create a reset uh, so if i have a new setting which is also a new message then i reset the delay so whatever is in the delay node gets uh, basically deleted and then I also added this 100 millisecond delay because, uh, of course, if I don't add delay, then uh, it might just reset the new message as well. So I have to add a little bit of delay. Maybe you can just go it down to like 10 milliseconds. But again, for the purposes I'm using for this 100 millisecond delay does not make any difference. And yeah, so this is how I change it. Of course, you can argue that you know you might not even need this loop because uh, you know if you set the flow variable here then it would get picked up on the next message so you might as well delete these two but then you just have to have another method of injecting the you know a first message to, to start this loop so that's uh, um, that is absolutely acceptable as well and i also created this other inject node which also sends in a message.reset value and that resets so that I can use to stop the inject node again this is something which is not possible if uh, sorry um, stop the trigger which is again is not something uh, not possible if you would use an inject node because again if you read the documentation you can set the delay um, and then if you do reset then it just you know deletes everything which is waiting in the delete node and uh, yeah so the only other thing is that with this one as you can see if you just start the flow well the way it is set up at the moment nothing really happens so it is not you know sending out messages so you might want to set one of these examples to inject at the startup so it injects the initial message so that's one thing that you can do or the other thing that you you can do as well if you want these um, um these settings to uh, to remain in the system you know even after restart then what i would suggest that you set this rate limit to be stored in the file and of course here when you are getting the rate limit you also get it from the file and then you would use an inject node like this one on the top which injects the message straight into the into the infinite loop and of course we, you know and, and that you would configure this at, at startup so here because then you know it just inject a message but then the you know the rate limit is already available because it's stored in the in the uh, in the file so then it can just pick up the delay itself and then start the infinite loop so these are the two options that i would configure this depending on whether i want a fixed default rate to start in the beginning or whether I want to keep the, the last rate that was specified the last time. But I think that would be pretty much it. So if you need something like this, then you will find the link to this in the video description. If you think that there is like a logical flow in this, um, in this implementation, just let me know. But uh, yeah, I'm planning to use this very soon in a new development. 
So if you find something, that, that, you know, if you find an issue with this and you, you would be able to share with me, I would really appreciate it. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.